happened? If anyone help me out, if what happens is, uh, to this world if the two degree of temperature change, can you can you anyone help you out? What will happen to this our Earth, Mother Planet Earth? Many animals on the Earth would die. Okay. And it will cause serious health issues to us. Our skin will be burnt. First thing. Ice from the poles may melt down and it will be it becomes into water. Yes. Okay, very nice, very nice. From both of you, Manoranjani and Dhananjay. Yes. Climatic conditions and uh, even the weather change, I mean, seasonal changes will not happen according to the time. Yeah, 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 definitely, definitely. You are all uh, to the point. And I'm going to discuss the few of the parameters, what would happen to this world when the two degrees of temperature rise. Let us see. For example, now uh, I am uh, going to the topic that is global surface temperature. We always think of whenever two degrees rise in temperature, we think normally in India we we'll get the temperatures 35 to 40 degrees. But there is another term in terms of global warming that is global surface temperature, which means it is calculated by averaging temperature at surface of the sea and air temperature over land. If GST at, uh, at large, it is uh, around 14 degrees. Generally, we think whenever the temperature rise, we let the literal terms, we think that ours is the temperature 35. If the temperature rise by two degrees, it would be disaster. It's not like that. It's just a global term for this. This is a global surface temperature. It is around 14 degrees. Okay, what, what happened uh, during the course of time to this world from 1900 to 2020? Okay, if you see the graph, there is only 1% change in the temperature. Nothing more than that. Because of that, we could, uh, nowadays we can at least uh, having our life happy. So, what would happen if the temperature rises above the two degrees of uh, this tolerance level one degree? Effects of temperature rise. See, as one of our friends said, increase the sea levels by two meters. Can you imagine that most of the famous, the uh, most of the famous cities in the world would disappear if the two degrees rise in the temperature? Let us see what are the what are the cities. The cities will be submerged into the water. London, New York, Mumbai, Bangladesh, and Osaka. I have named it very few. You can imagine what would be the serious effects of this temperature rise. And also, as many of our friends have said. You can see on the screen, wildfires will occur. The glaciers will disappear. Severe droughts, increased flooding, and new kind of pests will come into the nature. So we can imagine like there would be a serious disaster once the temperature rises about 20 degrees above. Now, I want to tell you the, the factor, what country is contributing the pollution levels to this factor? This is called carbon footprint, which means a carbon footprint is the total amount of green greenhouse gases that are generated by our actions by individual. Let us say USA, it is 16 ton per year per individual. It is the highest in the world. Whereas India is less than one ton, and where from Adiba is coming from, Morocco is 1.6 per ton. Okay, literally, uh, what this carbon footprint is all about? Why we are talking about this thing? Whenever any carbon emission takes place from any conventional vehicle, the smoke, that poisonous gases will enter into the atmosphere. 
and it is not settled. So the particles move around the atmosphere. Whatever the sunlight is coming from the sun will be eventually will not escape from our earth again into the atmosphere. So these particles are accumulated over the time and the heat which is coming from sun is again settled at the temperature at the atmosphere only, at the layer only. That would be causing the temperature rise. Okay. Now, I have given a glimpse of what this temperature rise having the effect of our human life, as well as how you would affect this conventional vehicles, uh, the conventional vehicles which are affecting our global warming. Now let's move on to the second session. Uh, that is our, uh, I'm introducing General Airline Director T.M. Dhananjay for the team, Toastmaster Dhananjay. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Toastmaster of the day. <clears throat> we cannot improve anything unless we measure it. Good evening, Toastmaster of the day, fellow Toastmasters and their guests. I'm Dhananjay Rao and I'm General Evaluator of the day. Toastmasters gives a lot of importance to improvements. Evaluations as a basic form of measurements are the most important in Toastmaster meetings. Today, as general evaluator, I'm responsible for evaluation of complete meeting proceedings. As I cannot do it alone, I have a team of wonderful people to help me with evaluations. First, let me introduce our timer, Toastmaster Divya, to introduce her role. Thank you, general evaluator. I hope I'm audible and visible. Yes. Okay. As a timer, today my role is to monitor the time, like the prepared speeches. Uh, for example, if they take five to seven minutes, I'll show the fifth minute a uh, green card. If you see my background, uh, it's in green. When it is fifth minute, I'll show green. When it is sixth minute, I'll show yellow card. And when it's seventh minute, I'll show or a red card. It indicates that it was like. Uh, end of the speech and also 30 seconds as a gracious as if you go with the table topic round then it was for two minutes for the one minute i'll show the green card and for one minute 30 seconds i'll show yellow card and for second minute i'll show a red card then 30 seconds is a gracious once general evaluator calls me i'll give up my report thank you over to you general evaluator Thank you, Divya, for your uh, detailed explanation. Now, uh, let me invite our accounter of the day, Toastmaster Anto, to explain his role. Toastmaster Anto. Thank you, Toastmaster Tanunjay. Am I audible? Yes. Thank you. I'm sure all Toastmasters and guests have gone through a smooth road, just like how you go to Hyderabad Airport. It's a great experience to drive on this road. Similarly, to have to give the audience a great experience in terms of speaking, you should have a road that is smooth and smooth sailing. So you should avoid, just like a road that's got potholes, one needs to avoid crutch words and filler words like ah, um, you know, and other favorite words that each and every one has. My favorite is you know, when I speak, you've heard me use this one a lot. So I'll be making a note of all these crutch words that you do. For me, it's a listening exercise. And after I do this listening exercise, I will be able to give a report at the end of the meeting as to where are the opportunities to improve in terms of these filler words. Over to you, Dhananjay, and good luck to all the speakers and board voters. Uh, thank you, Toshma Shanto, for your uh, detailed uh, explanation of your role. Now, let me invite <coughs> grammarian Toshma Vaishnavi to explain her role. Thank you so much, General Evaluator Toastmaster Dhananjay. Hello, fellow Toastmasters and guests. I am Toastmaster Vaishnavi, and I will be playing the role of Word Master Grammarian for today's meeting. Being the Word Master Grammarian, it's my duty to keep a close check on the usage of English. I will be noting down good usages and not so good usages. I will present my report in the end when called upon by the General Evaluator. As I'm also the Word Master, it is my duty to introduce word of the day and idiom of the day to all of you can i quickly share my screen if that's okay 
sure you, you have the access. Uh, can someone confirm the screen is visible? Yes, it is visible. Word of the day is nimble. You can see the phonetic transcription here. The meaning of nimble is very quick and swift. You can use it like people prefer, I'm sorry, people prefer buying automobiles that are very nimble. Her nimble mind helped her crack this interview. So this is the word of the day for your uh, for the guests and uh, for the speakers or role players who want to incorporate this. I will be pasting this in the chat box. Idiom of the day is Achilles heel. Achilles heel is a small problem or a weak point in someone who is otherwise perfect or something which is otherwise perfect. For example, vehicles make our life easy, but pollution caused by them is the Achilles heel. This is a brilliant car, but its poor engine performance could be its Achilles heel. Now, someone might be wondering who is Achilles, why heel, why is it weakness? So, let me quickly tell you a short story which, will, which might only take up one minute. This man you're seeing on my screen is Achilles. He was a great, great Greek warrior. People say he was almost perfect. Why was he almost perfect? Uh, his mother... Lady Thetis, when he was a child, she was uh, asked by someone to dip him in the holy river of Skax, which had magical water. So she held him by his knee and dipped him inside the river. Each and every body part of Achilles was covered in the water except for his heel. So in order to kill him, one has to hit him on his heel. The same thing happened in the Trojan War where he lost his life. His enemies hit him on the heel. So we use the idiom Achilles heel to describe someone's weakness. I will be putting this on the chat box. I want all the members in the, in the, in the meeting to show thumbs up when someone uses the word of the day or phrase of the day. I will be noting down the names of people who use them and I will present my report in the end when called upon by the general evaluator. Thank you so much and over to you, Jeev. Uh, thank you, Toastmaster Vaishnavi. You have not only introduced the, this uh, word of the day and India of the day, you made us to remember them for the lifetime by giving a very good explanation about them. Thank you. And I have uh, speech evaluators whom I will introduce them at later part of meeting. As a general evaluator, I will also note down my observations and along with my team, I will submit my report when TMOD calls upon the stage. Thank you. And what do you toast much of the day? Thank you. Thank you, Tavanjay. Uh, that was a wonderful uh, theme with you and all of uh, having done a very great job. Okay. We have discussed the till now how the two degrees of temperature rise would affect this uh, mother air. Now you can see this Hyderabad pollution. How many of you feel that our uh, Hyderabad pollution, particularly, has doubled in the last couple of years? Definitely, it has. Uh, this couple of years, it has been very high. In terms of uh, particularly Delhi, Hyderabad, these are very alarming situations. Generally, in conventional vehicles, we fill the fuel, and when you start engine, the combustion will take place in the engine, and it will emit poisonous gases like carbon monoxide and CO2 like that. As I explained earlier, that it would enter into the atmosphere, which is causing global temperature to rise. This is in turn affecting our whole human life. So, as I discussed, for entire transport pollution, if you consider what is the percentage of cars percentage, 70% of the pollution which is caused by cars. And you, you, for your surprise, for aeroplanes, 10%. Though we are using very uh, small amount of uh, uh, transportation, few people are only using it, though it is constituting 10% of uh, pollution. Means 
as cars constitutes constitutes major seventy percent of pollution, all governments and all people are concerned about reduce this pollution. What would be the best option to bring back these conventional vehicles? So we are moving towards electric vehicles. Okay. See, let us examine what. As I told you, in conventional vehicles, you fill the fuel, and engine will uh, uh, take care of this uh, combustion and emissions of gases. You can simply imagine how a electric car works like this. Example: a toy car of your kid. If you keep one small battery, without any problem, it will run. No kind of because here you are not filling fuel. You are get just. Keeping energy stores in the car, so you can understand better with this analogy. Analogy. So, when it comes comes to the electric car, you would place a bigger battery in bigger car. That's it. Nothing else. Everything is same like a toy car of your kid. Okay. What is the pros of this electric car? Number one is no noise. It's a very smooth drive. You can see a few campuses in uh, software campuses. They use battery cars. We we cannot find the car is moving behind you, isn't it? Very smooth drive and less maintenance. No emissions at all. No pollution so that. So before going to the what's the cons of this electric car, we will move to this day prepare prepared speeches. Okay. Today, the first speaker speech objectives would be taken care by T M Manoranjani. What do you, T M Toastmaster Manoranjani? Ladies and gentlemen, and fellow Toastmasters, a warm good evening, and my special greetings to you, Toastmaster Adiba, my target speaker of the day. As we all know, my name is Ranjini, and I'm an advocate and insolvency professional. Today, I'm going to evaluate Toastmaster Adiba's speech on her L1P3 project. The purpose of the project is for her to learn or review basic research methods and present a well-organized, well-researched speech on any topic. Adiba, I wish you all the very best. I'm sure you will rock. Over to you, TMOD Suresh. Thank you, uh, Manoraj. Toastmaster Adiba. She's all the way from Morocco. She studied economics and she's working on developing quality of services in an insurance company right now. She co-founded Eloquent Leaders Toastmasters Club in August 2020. She's currently area effort director in District 107. And also, she is a club mentor for AILC EI Jadida Toastmasters Club. When I asked her about one measure you would suggest to control the pollution, she replied, try to use most of the online services at present in pandemic we are using. We have most of the time, we minimized our traveling. It is the best option to continue to reduce pollution. Now, Tia Madida, how it can be solved? How it can be solved, TM Adiba? I'm sorry to interrupt. Adiba, can you please confirm that you're able to see the timer pass? Toastmaster Adiba is showing up. Yes, I can see her. Okay. Can you please so, confirm that you can hear me clearly? Manuranjali, can you please confirm that you're able to see and hear Adiba properly? Okay, great. So, Suresh, can you invite her again? I'm sorry. Okay, okay, no problem. PM Adida, how it can be solved? How can be solved PM Adida? Do you use to think? And consequently, how do you solve your problems? Have you ever thought about that? 
So please let me share with you some statistics. In 2005, the National, Fi National Science Foundation published an article about the thoughts of a human being per day. It says that the average person has between, listen carefully, 12,000 to 60,000 thoughts per day. 80% of them are negative thoughts, unfortunately. But the information that blew up my mind is that 95% of all those thoughts are the same repetitive thoughts of the day before. Can you imagine that we have only 5% of new thoughts? Why is this important to me? Well, this reminds me of a challenge that I faced the last year when I was co-founding Eloquent Leaders Toastmasters Club. I was a member of Rabat Toastmasters Club. It was an in-person club. And when we faced the lockdown, we were always meeting online. So we thought about creating a new Toastmasters online club that would benefit to members from the whole country. But here, we faced an issue. The Ankles Hill was that we always were comparing the experience of the online club to the in-person club. We were always meeting after the meeting to have a coffee, discuss about any topic, go to do some activities together. We had some, let's say, activities that goes beyond the Toastmasters Club that kept us connected to each other. But when thinking about creating this new online club, how can we gather all those people from the whole country, different cities, they cannot meet each other. And of course, there was the pandemic. They won't be able to meet even us in, in Rabat, we couldn't meet, but we had to reflect about this. So we had several meetings together to think about how to bring up those people to constitute this new club. In our meetings, we had always this kind of, in Rabat club, we used to do this. When chartering robot club, we used to do that. We used to discuss with people, we used to call them. And it was a big issue for me as the acting vice president of membership who had to come up with all the chartering members. Ah, so I had to think how to get this nimble idea to charter this new club. So I did so many researches on the internet, on different topics, how to do this, how to do that. And I ended up finding an online course. Maybe it will be weird for you, but it was called Design Thinking. It was a course from Open Classroom. Um, it was in French, unfortunately, you cannot see it. <laughs> but I will share with you some tips from that online course. It started with the simple idea of defining the design. So the easiest way to define it to you, their Toastmasters, is that a design is the process to create a concept that will solve an issue. 
Let's reflect on it together. With this new definition, yes, I confirm every one of you has been or is currently a designer. Yes, you have to be proud of yourself. But how to start this process to bring up your design? The first step is to understand the problem. At that time, we had to create an online club, but with always the reflection of the in-person club. So me and my teammates, we had to forget about the in-person experience to start a, a new online concept. The second step is to develop possible solutions. How to meet those new people, how to get them into visiting this online club. So here we used some uh, all the social media like Facebook, like LinkedIn, like Instagram, WhatsApp, and we get we crafted a form to ask several questions to identify the right person or the right prospect member. The third step is to prototype, test, and refine. For me, as an active VP membership, I had to always test my forms. Does it help me bring the right person to the club? So each time I kept modifying it. Still having the final version that comes in the fourth and last step, which is implementing. So ladies and gentlemen, I would like to leave you with this simple thought. Whenever you face a problem or an issue that you want to solve, think about that you have only 5% of new thoughts per day. Try to eliminate the repetitive ones. And then start the process of your design following the fourth step. Thank you so much. Back to you, Toastmaster of the Day. Thank you. Thank you, Adiba. That was a wonderful speech. And uh, moving to second speaker of the day, he doesn't require any introduction. He's a founder of Toastmaster for Hyderabad Entrepreneurs Club and distinguished Toastmaster Feather in his cap. And presently working in Bank of America, he is presently VP education for this club. When I asked him about one measure you would suggest to minimize the pollution, he replied, uses of public transport and carpooling means sharing of the car while traveling. DJM Raghu, the distinguished Toastmaster Raghu, it's time, it's time, DJM Raghu. Uh, you need to call the evaluator. <laughs> oh, sorry, sir. Okay, sorry, sorry. The speech objectives of the speaker too is going to address my TM Puneet. Thank you so much, Toastmaster Suresh. I can clearly, we all know how much eager we are to listen to Raghu, but anyways, we have to go with the proceedings, right? Isn't it? Having said that, change is an inevitable part of our life. But how do we communicate change? Why is it needed to be communicated? Now, this is exactly what Toast, distinguished Toastmaster Raghu is going to attempt today. And he is attempting from the pathway visionary communication and his project is level four, P2, which is communicate change. So the purpose of this project is to practice skills needed to effectively communicate change to a group or organization. Timer, please know that the time is five to seven minutes with a grace period of 30 seconds. Wishing distinguished Toastmaster Raghu all the best. And now, Suresh, you can introduce the speaker. Okay. Okay, as per proceedings, uh, he's the founder of the Toastmaster for Hyderabad and Peeners, and he's the trustee. I think you already introduced just go with the title. Fine, fine, fine. Okay, I'm calling Raghu once again. DTM Raghu, it's time. It's time, DTM Raghu. Okay, give me a few seconds. I'll just leave the spot. I'll just start on my own timer. 
Thank you. Thank you very much. The time I can start now. Those my TV. Darwin has told that it is in the species. It is not the most intellectual, or neither the strongest who survive. It is the ones who adapt to change. Change. If you ask scholars, they say change is inevitable. Change is constant. Change is eternal, perpetual, and immortal. Toastmaster Day, fellow Toastmasters. And my dear kids, there's a famous saying in Telugu, "Bemana," who has given one beautiful poem, and I always like it. Gangi ko vo palu, garita dae na chalu, kadi bina ina ne emi kadi bhi palu. It's talking about quality. What is the use of having quantity when we can have good quality? We started Toastmaster for Hyderabad Entrepreneurs in November 2020. And we achieved ten out of ten DCT goals in short period of time. We have people who went across the world giving speeches. But I think it's time that I identified Achilles' heels in the quality, in the quality of the speeches, or in the quality of evaluations. As if you see the movie of Mohabbate from Bollywood movie. the winds have changed the winds have changed because the winds now have changed for the betterment of the club to bring the quality and to bring the quality again the change has to occur so it's a time my fellow toast masters and friends and for this change i'm here to communicate the change is a necessity I am here to propose the change that has to happen for the betterment of the club. First one, membership criteria. So I have heard from so many senior Toastmasters and even the one who run entrepreneurial club across the world. With the discussion, I found out that Toastmasters clubs are for inclusiveness. For that. we are going to ensure that we will have members who are inclusive and who have the mindset of entrepreneurship not just people who are just entrepreneur or who are one entrepreneur so we will include that this will bring all the necessary flow which the excitement in the club then coming to second part meeting teams meeting teams will be in different sections Our categories that can say emerging technologies, entrepreneurship, different sections of that. Our case studies of how certain industries have risen and how they have fallen down. Maybe Harshad Mehta one day will discuss about it. Success stories, different success stories, how entrepreneurs have really grown and how that we can pick up as one thing for each person. then comes the educational sessions and guest speaker why do we need educational sessions there are certain areas as i have identified which needs the nimble mind evaluations or table topics for this i am going to ensure that we will have educational sessions every first then they say all work and no play will make our members are anyone the jack the dull boy for that the fourth week will be a meeting where we will either have informal session or we'll have social activity or just a impromptu session or impromptu league this will help us again in two ways one thing is getting to know each other and second thing is developing that nimble mind joint meetings every two months why we are here to let the world know that tosh master for hyderabad entrepreneurs is one of the best clubs in how do we get to know is having a joint meetings let the fraternity know that we are here second thing this cultural differences we get to understand how do they work and we get to learn for example we have adiba here speaking that is going to bring 
learning for us. At the same time, she is going to take that learning for her own club. Mentor and houses. I am planning to have mentors both internal and external. Same time, I am going to have four houses. A league will be there so that we will together work as one club, but then four houses will compete with each other. The roles are pretty speeches. And then every month, the competition, healthy competition, will bring the results for the club and the members of the club. Advanced project guidance. There are different projects in level four, level five, which really requires guidance. And I will ensure to have mentors for them specially because one person cannot help everybody. This will ensure that the HPL projects or other main projects will be done in now with the complete integrity. Panel discussions. We can have panel discussion as part of our project or we can have panel discussion in general. This is indirect way of learning and I'm sure everybody will get to learn from that. Why the advantage side? We have a great way of learning and fun both included but there are few disadvantages that I see and I really empathize with everybody when they will not be able to have come the complete the speech speaker slots. We can work it out. We will network with other clubs. We have working right now, working with different clubs and entrepreneurial clubs in India, five clubs, and then also working with other clubs internationally where we can just have a share of the speaker slots. Yes, it's the time that we all adapt to change. Why? Because change might be difficult at this point of time. But remember, my friends, if change is not what we understand, our change is not we adapt, we might not be able to make it to the best. Think if the person who invented the rock that rolled down. And if we not change to a wheel, will we be moving across the world in different forms? Think about it, Toastmaster. Thank you, DTM uh, Raghu. That was a wonderful speech. Now, the timer, please let us know whether the both speakers are eligible for voting. You're on mode. Speaker 1 took 7 minutes 44 seconds and Speaker 2 took 7 minutes 26 seconds. So I think as per the gracious time, 30 seconds is already done. So I think Speaker 1 is not qualified. Thank you. Thank you, Timer Divya. Okay, only one speaker is available for voting. There is no voting for only one person. So we will move forward with table topics. Very impre interesting and impromptu. Uh, all are requested to participate in impromptu speeches as you all do in the previous meetings. Now I introduce Toastmaster Nagmohan the Madhuri, Ang and Energetic. Will, she will definitely bring very uh, very innovative kind of uh, speeches for us. PM Nagamadri. Thank you so much, Suresh. I hope I'm audible and visible. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You are. Uh, before I speak, uh, could someone confirm if my screen is visible? Is it visible? Visible. Yeah, thank you. Good evening, my dear fellow Toastmasters and guests. I'm Toastmaster Nagama Guri, the Table Topic Master for today's session, which is also called as Impromptu Speaking. When I joined Toastmasters, I used to think, why do we have this Impromptu Speaking in this big, great international organization? But I used to take part. After a while, I realized it made me nimble enough to listen, think, and speak on feet on any given topic. It made me more confident. So I would encourage every Toastmaster and guest to take, especially guests to take part in this impromptu speaking, where I will give few numbers and you just have to pick a number 
I'll give a topic and you just have to speak for one to two minutes. At minute one, our timer will show green card. At one minute, 30 seconds, yellow. And at two minutes, red card, which means you need to wind up your speech soon. So I would first encourage a Toastmaster to take uh, to come up so that the guests can understand how this goes. Any Toastmaster? We have okay. Toastmaster Rajiv Kanna. Uh, could you please pick a number from one to 10? Lucky seven. One, one to 10. Seven is one to 10, isn't it? Yep, yeah, okay. Can you see the screen? Let me try without my glasses. I can. Okay. Can you also see the timer? I know, I can see the screen, thank you. Yes. Toastmaster Rajiv, food trucks or expensive restaurants, which one do you prefer? Food trucks or expensive restaurants, which one do you prefer, Toastmaster Rajiv? Thank you, Madam Table Topics Master, fellow Toastmasters, Mr. Toastmaster of the day. It is the bane of today's civilization that we conflate and confuse value with money. Just because something is expensive does not mean it is worth or valuable. You could buy a gas guzzling car that is expensive, and a status symbol. But if you are, like the Toastmaster of the day suggested, a conscientious human being and worried about the environment, you would see there is no value in it. The status symbol is just that. One day we will burn up the earth and we will have no cars to drive and no people to have them in. In my view, Madam Table Topics Master, it does not matter what the cost is if there is value. So if I wanted something truly exotic, for example, puffer fish, did you know that if puffer fish is not properly prepared, it can kill you? It is one of the most dangerous meals in, on this earth. I will not buy puffer, fill, puffer fish from Kaka's side stand. I would go to an expensive restaurant, not necessarily expensive, but a restaurant that is valuable does the job right. But if I wanted kulcha chole, I don't think I need to go to a five-star restaurant for that. It is all in the value. That is my final opinion. Madam Table Topics Master. Very well spoken to Master Rajiv. At the end of the day, value is something what matters to us most of the time. Could I have the second volunteer, please? I would encourage all the guests, especially non-Toastmasters and non-role players to take part. Yes, Amit Kumar, do you want to try? Uh, yeah, I can try. Sure. Uh, guest Amit, could you please pick a number from 1 to 10 except 7? Uh, 3. Okay. I would encourage everyone to use the word of the day and idiom of the day. I'm so sorry about this. Okay, the, uh, it just got stuck. The topic is what kills most of your time? What kills most of your time, Toastmaster Amit? Sorry, guest Amit. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, thank you, uh, Table Toastmaster. Uh, so, yeah, what kills most of our time? So, basically, like, you know, we are in an era where we uh, use our mobile phones or technology technology to like uh, uh, to imp uh, like to ease our process like uh, it can be anything so similarly like we use our mobile phones as a uh, like to entertain us or to also like uh, or also like as part of important uh, daily routine like uh, talk to friends or like talk talk to our relative 
so similarly like uh, we we also like spend a lot of time on using mobile phone like uh, on using some app uh, like social activities app like instagram or facebook so we know like even though uh, it it is it is a really like a uh, time consuming a uh, a process like we can spend some time on it uh, via like uh, there are many uh, entertaining activities that comes in this uh, that 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 is in these uh, apps uh, which we don't even re- realize ki how much time we are spending on it so if we take an example of instagram so there are reels in it so once we stop once we start watching it so we can just go ahead and watch it and we don't even realize ki how much time we spend on it so uh, like yeah we would i would say ki yeah, like that is how we, we usually spend our time most of the time uh but yeah like we also sometime later we understand that this is not how we should spend our time and then later we realize and we somehow want to improve it and uh yeah like this is the uh, like this is a uh, this is how we spend like most of our, our time thank you guest amit i personally use a screen limit app so that i can keep track of how i spend my uh, time most of the time on mobile thank you for coming up Uh, could i have the second volunteer please third volunteer okay hi so akil i'm the dhanam chat so we'll go with akil first and the dhanam chat so master akil could you please pick a number from 1 to 10 except 7 akil can you start your video first please i uh, yeah, actually am te- due to some technical issue i'm not able to turn on my camera no problem for that yeah n- number 6 toastmaster akil if you get to be a billionaire for a day what are the things you would first do if you get to be a billionaire for a day what are the things you would first do yeah If I if, thank you, table topic master. If I am a billionaire for a day, first I would be investing all my money into different portfolios. Then uh, I would take I would be taking some money. I would travel. Uh, I would try to travel to different places and uh, invest in different places and even enjoy the, enjoy the place where I am going. So that uh, even after uh, uh, that one day. even though if i am not a billionaire that uh, that investments which i have made would be making my making me a billionaire and one more thing that i can do is uh, i'll try to buy some spices some diamonds and keep in my pocket <laughs> and i would have a special uh, jet so that i could uh, travel to all the countries which i wanted to if not possible I, mainly i would do, try to invest in different portfolios like the uh, land stocks and even uh, all the all all the type of currencies that are existing <laughs> so that i would not be a billionaire for a day but i would i can be a billionaire for a lifetime not only in the money wise but what also as a person i can make use of time efficiently i can take i can make use of a money efficiently i can make i can even try to i can be toast master for all the time so that i can after the even not only for that day but of later after i can enjoy a lot i'll but if if i if, you, if i think i don't have a chance of that then i'll try to go to las vegas by having my special jet i'll try to party over there if i don't have an option of any investments kind of thing and i'll get back or else i will try to have a by time machine and keep it me thank you so much thank you so much toast master back to thank you toast master akil you are quite nimble and you have quite a entrepreneur mindset so that's a right topic in the right club uh, could i have the next one in your please yeah the yeah. nanjay is the next one okay Uh, Toastmaster Dhananjay, could you please pick a number? Eight. Okay. Okay. 
Okay, I'll just give a topic. Is it important to love or to be loved? Toastmaster Dhanunjay, is it important to love or to be loved? Good evening, uh, Table Topic Master and Toastmaster of the Day and uh, fellow Toastmasters. Yes, uh, it is very important uh, to love or to be loved because the most important emotion between human beings and other and other animals is love. Love is one of the important emotion to experience life. Suppose if you are in a family and if you are not getting loved or if you if you don't love your family, you cannot enjoy the time you spend with your family. Similarly, if you don't love your life, then it it is useless to uh, live a life worth living. So I always uh, see more and more methods how to get more love from my colleagues, my friends, my family and all my social circle. Because uh, otherwise there is no point in only living a life. There is There will be no difference between living like a human and animal. And uh, I in, like this is the way I am trying and I encourage all members also to try more such methods to get love. Thank you and over to you to uh, Table Topic Master. Thank you Master Dhanunjay. Uh, we have... uh, uh, Madri, one minute. Manoranjani is the first next Toastmaster but can we try just before her? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Indri Indriya Reddy, do you want to take it up? Yeah, I will try next time. No, no, it's okay. There's no next time. Just just come up and take up the topic. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, guest Indira, choose a number from one to five. Four. Four? Is that four? Four. four. Okay. okay. I'm glad that I kept topics in hand. Would you rather live at a hilltop house or a seaside house and why? Indira, would you rather live at a hilltop house or a seaside house? Why? Mm -hmm. uh, Actually, I don't know how to explain. Uh, so, which one will you choose to live? Uh, either at the hillside or uh, where you have a sea? Yeah, hill, uh, hillside I will choose. Hill. And why? Hill. Uh, because seaside means, uh, I don't know perfectly, <laughs> just... Uh, It's okay, Indira. Just try and talk for one minute at least. Just go ahead. Okay. So, guest Indira, why do you like hills? You can speak about that. Yeah. I am it's a pretty handsome and uh, the reason they are living hill house so they so they can flip in it and run a pretty handsome uh, Sorry. No problem, Indira. Yeah. Yeah. Thank so you, guest to... Indira. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, that was indeed a great attempt, and I really appreciate you for that. Uh, next, we have guest Arshita. Uh, we have Manu Ranjani. Because after Manu Ranjani, we'll take Arshita. Okay, sure. Uh, Toastmaster Manu Ranjani. Yeah. Yeah. Please choose a number. One. Okay. So. Toastmaster Manor Anjani, what is one primary quality you look in your life partner? 
what is one primary quality you look in your life partner over to you thank you to master madhuri i think uh, now it is all over there is nothing that i could look for and i'm happy with whatever i have that is with my husband ram he is just opposite to me just very very opposite to me we are 180 degrees opposite to each other but as it says opposites attract he is a very calm pious person and i'm very active dynamic like in everything in life active so i think god creates like that and we are happy with each other that way so if you ask me for the young boys and girls what i would suggest is follow your heart and just don't compromise on your life partner just follow your path and find your life dream and be happy and uh, coming to my son he's got married to his sweet soulmate or life childhood friend and they're very happy and i'm waiting for my daughter to get married so it's a complete family we are happy together all of us so i'm just happy seeing you all being with your family is happy it's good thank you thank you toast master manoranjini uh, uh, could i have guest uh, arshita arshita are you a toast master or a guest arshita is a guest okay Are you with us, uh, Guest Ashita? Uh, meanwhile, Ashita, get back to us. Could I have Miss Volunteer, please? I'd like to give it a go. Uh, is that Pune? Anto. Uh, Anto. Okay, uh, so I'm sorry. Pune can Pune can go first as well. No problem. Yeah. Yeah, Pune can go next. Okay. Uh, Toastmaster, Anto, what? When was the last time you tried something new? When was the last time you tried something new, Toastmaster, Anto? Thank you so much, Nagamadri. When was the last time I tried something new? I would say it was just yesterday, and I had this fantastic dish called Gongura Chicken Biryani. So it's only been three months since I've come to Hyderabad. Wow, it's been a blast. It's been Uh, it's been a festival for my palate in terms of the different foods and flavors that they can get to witness in Hyderabad. And I know when I speak to people, I'm just getting started. I spoke to Toastmaster Shiva the other day, and he was also telling me this is the land where you're going to get food and food in different varieties. Speaking about Gongora chicken biryani, this is some Gongora, as even as a leaf, which I understand it's a leaf that is being used to. create this flavor it's not something common in my state of kerala it's got a very distinctive flavor and coming to the exact topic why i'm trying something new i'm a huge believer of the fact that life is totally unexplored if you don't try something new there are so many facets of your life that you need to figure out and only if you find different things and new things to explore and find i'm not just saying food but everything in general only then you will discover a really unique person within yourself one thing that i never used to do before i got married was travel and my wife is huge is is extremely fond of traveling and what did i realize once i started traveling i love traveling as well <laughs> and what did she realize after marrying me she is also a foodie so this end, ended up honestly trying things new is a wonderful experiment don't stay with the mainstream don't stay with the usual options try something new because you don't know what's there out in the world to try you don't know what's there in store for you and to be honest trying out gongura biryani has been excellent i'm going to try a different type of biryani most likely keema biryani the next time and i'm sure it's going to be worth it over to you table topic master everybody try something new this week Thank you, Toastmaster Anto. You just made me mouth watering since I'm a foodie, but I'm surely gonna try that. Um, before I move to uh, Toastmaster Pune, do we have a uh, guest, Arshita, back? Arshita, we can't hear you. Uh, but uh, she's uh, raised hand. She must be facing some. Uh, yeah. So do you want to leave the meeting and try to join back? Maybe then we can hear you. Yeah. There must be some issue with your audio. 
Arshita. Yeah, sure. Just leave the meeting and then just join back. Yeah. That might help you. Meanwhile, we can have Puneet. Yeah. Toastmaster Puneet. Um, do you think our smartphones leads us procrastinate or do they help us to be productive enough? What do you think? Do you think our smartphones leads us to procrastinate or do they help us to be productive? Toastmaster Puneet. Robin Sharma beautifully said that an attention to distraction is the death of our creative potential. Talking about this topic, procrastination. In fact, I read this beautiful book, which is known as, uh, by, I forgot the name of the author, an amazing book on, uh, on productivity. Uh, I'm not able to recollect the exact. Okay, yeah. Uh, Neeraya, yes, Indistractable. The, the book, amazing book. And uh, here the, the author clearly says, he brings out a research by a marketing agency which did a research which says that 85%, more than 85% of the people don't actually change their smartphone settings once they get their mobile phone. Uh, I have experienced it personally. I've seen my father who owns an iPhone. Yes, my father is the biggest iPhone fan in the history of universe. He loves iPhone and uh, I will observe that he never changes his notification. And on the other hand, I'm an Android user. So I get very bogged down by all these notification and distraction. And one beautiful thing which I have done is that I've changed all my notification. And I strongly believe it depends on how you use it. Science is a boon or ban and notification does exist. In fact, believe it or not, tech companies are incentivized. They want your eyeballs. They want your attention. And that's where they make a lot of money out of it, which is not bad because they have to own their money. and. Of course, we as a human being tend to get distracted because we do not have clear clarity focus in our life. Okay, now coming back to this discussion, if you know how to manage your smartphone, I sincerely believe you can handle anything in life and it's a great productive tool. In fact, it's because of distinguished Toastmaster who, who kept, okay, meeting has started, please join. I came to know that, okay, this meeting is about to start. Hence, I joined the meeting. If this mobile phone wouldn't have been there, then I would have been late. And chances are that you would have hated me. Raghu wouldn't have called me for the next meeting. I would have broken friendship with him. So friends, it's up to us to use it. Use phone wisely. Let, uh, instead of allowing notifications to control you, it's better you control the notification. And I strongly believe, depends on how you use it. I believe smartphone is the greatest productive gadget in the world. Back to you, Table Topic Master. Very well said, uh, Toastmaster Puneet. That's a nice take. Um, we have uh, Arshita back in the room. Arshita, do you want to check your audio? No, still the same. Are you using your mic? Any mic code? Or you can type in the chat box, uh, to, uh, guest Arshita, in Arshita. case you're feeling any technical issue. Looks like her mic is not. So this is a no, last. Madhuri, we have one more topic to try. So you can invite. Okay. okay uh, do we have any volunteer? We have two volunteers. Toastmaster Adiba and then Toastmaster. Oh, we have Mr. Maida as well. Uh, guest Maida, would you like to try? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Okay, okay great. Meida, if you were given an opportunity to have a superpower, what would it be? And what would you do with it? If you were given an opportunity to have a superpower, what would it be? And what would you do with that? Okay, so I'm a huge uh, fan of superhero movies, especially Avengers. And I'm a huge fan of Iron Man. Is, uh, Iron Man. So if I have, like, I have always imagine to how to how it will be like to be an iron man you know and have the uh, java set up in the room the all controlling ai with all robots at disposal for whatever we want so if i would have to be choose to be a superhero it would be to be iron man or have all those technical uh, abilities and all those scientific mind and to do whatever i want to do as quick as he does and also have that cool um, 
attitude and the and the friends of other superheroes as well and you know having a team who can take on the world and save the world so that is always a dream for uh, when since i was a child so um, yeah that would be one thing i would do and also maybe um, i don't know maybe i'll try to figure out whatever comes by <laughs> learning and seeing other other things that uh, yeah that's it i guess thank you Thank you, Meda. Yeah, that's a great take. Yeah, it's time we can wind up it. Yeah, thank you. Ah, uh, do we have a timer, Divya? Ah, uh, could you please let us know if all the table topic speakers are qualified for voting? I think she dropped. She left a message there. Okay, so I would give back to the Toastmaster of the day. Ah, uh, maybe you can check with the timer, Divya, about the timing report and. all the table topic speakers guests and non toastmasters were nimble enough to speak on any given topic i would really love to appreciate you all over to toastmaster of the day thank you very much table topic master i think we forgot to take a break in between now after table topics we'll take 5 minutes break so 2014 so we'll let's recon at uh, 8 19 thank you see you Somebody wants to stay back and then network. Yeah, it's over. Hey guys, nice to meet session. Very enjoyable. Good Thank job. You. Thank you, Dosh Master. Thank you. Nice, nice to see and you. Meeting. Good to see you, Puneet. How are you doing? I'm excellent, Dosh Master Rajiv. When I grow I up, I'm going to be just like you. <laughs> <laughs> Pakka, I've decided. बड़ा होके पूरी करूंगा हम लोग हम सब लोग बनना चाहते हैं बड़ा होके वी हैव टू रिस्पेक्ट द फैक्ट दैट वी हैव वन पर्सन अमंग स्टार्स हु डजंट स्पीक हिंदी या या सॉरी वो इट्स सो इजी टू स्लिप इनटू हिंदी एंड पंजाबी एंड इंग्लिश वन फ्रॉम द अदर इट्स वी डोंट स्पीक इंग्लिश वी डोंट स्पीक वन लैंग्वेज वी स्पीक ऑल लैंग्वेजेस टुगेदर सो व्हिच पार्ट ऑफ पंजाबी आर फ्रॉम राजीव Right now, I am from the Washington D.C. part of Punjab, but uh, <laughs> I know you are from all... Washington. Yeah, I think we met in one of the meetings where Did I we? sent you an invite in the email. Oh, Raghu, yes, of course. You are Raghu from uh, what is that? Uh, the litigating association. <laughs> yeah, of course. We just corresponded the other day. Yes, yes, right. absolutely. I remember. So, which part of Punjab is it? Ludhiana. You can tell a native, native from a non-native. If they say Ludhiana, they are not native. If they say Ludhiana, they are native. By the way, that Gongura stuff, man, it's the bomb. The first time I had Gongura, I thought I had died and gone to heaven. Dal and Gongura. Oh my God, exquisite. Nothing else tastes like. I was blown away myself. I, I really enjoyed that dish. Yeah, Absolutely good. fantastic. After after I tasted gongora biryani, uh, I got went to the supermarket and got myself gongora pickle, and I'm I'm like hunting for everything that's got gongora in it. So we we even decided like when I go back to my state, I'm going to get you know my friends and family, everybody you know a couple of things like gongora pickle and things that I can take back. So it's been it's been it's pretty good. Adiba, you've tried biryani, right? Actually, know. actually no. I oh. never tried it, but does uh, oh. I will go to an Indian restaurant <laughs> today <laughs> in Casablanca and to try this kind of biryani. It's spicy, but you will love it. Oh, biryani! Okay, it's... Um, definitely. So, give me some suggestions by order of preference. Which I like. I let, let my foodie friend take over there. Yeah. Okay. I eat dal and rice, lentils and rice every day. I'm not a much of a foodie. Do okay. you have anyone who considers veg biryani to be biryani and not pulao? I do. I think you can make. I'm bored. Yeah, you can make paneer biryani and biryani with cauliflower. That's excellent, actually. I'm a veggie. All so. my friends go like that is not biryani. That is pulao. Okay. <laughs> 
Well, no. he, the like, only difference between pilau and biryani, Adiba, is biryani is cooked in layers. So okay. you you have a layer layer of a, of partially cooked rice, topped with with meat or vegetables. Then another layer of partially partially cooked rice. So it's like a like a layer cake of rice and different things. More of That's a dum biryani sort. Sorry. <laughs> More yeah. of a dum biryani sort. Well, dum biryani. Dumb is biryani. The, well, see, there's Lucknow biryani, dum biryani. There's all sorts of biryani. The only difference is in dum, you don't cook rice to completion. You let it cook under dam, but in Lucknowi biryani, biryani they cook it a little bit differently, and they put uh, lugat. I don't know what lugat is called in English. Um, Describe it. My English is not that. I tried Awadi biryani in ah, in veg, in, in veg biryani actually. So I can check it, it on Google to see the image. You That's should try. Yeah. You should try Hyderabadi biryani or Awadi biryani. It's going to be spicy, ah. but you'll love it. Okay. I think I think each region of India has got a different type of biryani. So you start from um, you know if you if you take my home state, there is you know the Malabari biryani. You you go one state up and you go to Tamil Nadu, you have uh, Chettinad biryani. Chettinad. Yeah. And in, in, then you have Dindigul biryani. Then you keep going up the states. Then you have. Hyderabadi yeah. biryani, you have Andhra style biryani. There are just so many different. So each state has got a different way to actually cook it. The one that you have debate, is Andhra. The Gongura biryani is yeah, Andhra. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, and, and even the spices that you use are different. Different. Yeah, very different. In okay. in Adiva in in India, every ten miles the culture changes. Every <laughs> ten miles. <laughs> We have over one thousand dialects. and 13 i think official languages yeah wow. so we don't have one national language we actually just have official languages that's true true so everybody in india grows up speaking at least three languages and by the way if i were to retire i would retire probably in kerala damn <laughs> it is so true 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 yeah <laughs> that is one Not thing that especially it's a beautiful oh? place oh yeah it's very pretty so green and lush That's um, that's amazing. You have a very rich culture. We do, and yeah. the way to communicate uh, with so many dialects and languages in the same country it makes um, a huge mixture. Can you I believe? I want to be able to visit it. Our Telugu. There is one language called Telugu in our state where we speak. There itself, we have some five six dialects in. Right. It. Yeah. That I did not know. Okay. Telugu I... itself is not common. Like Telangana, ah. Telugu is different. Andhra, Telugu is different. Rajasthan, <laughs> Telugu is different. Things are different. Thank Nello, you. Different. I'm sorry. The place we are currently sitting is. Andhra, Telugu is also one. You can understand. Sorry to interrupt. The sorry to. The tone sorry. and. Ma Madhur Anjali, I'm sorry. Sorry to interrupt. Yeah, go ahead. Go it's ahead. It's time. Go. It's time to start. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. Go oh, to Toastmaster of the day. I will launch a poll. please take few seconds to vote for them ragu shall i start yeah just after the poll okay we need five more polls just for information rajiv i studied in rcf kapoorthala just near husainpur you must have heard very familiar with it yeah tago is table topic speakers names are correct can you please second tell me yes sir they are correct so three more to go I mean, two, one, zero. Start. Ah, uh, the winner, post master. Please you can start. Okay. Now, Paru, shall I start? Yeah, sure. You can start.
Okay, I think uh, we have gone through a wonderful impromptu session, and uh, my topic is electric vehicles. We call come back to my topic once again. Now, I have discussed what is the pros of uh, electric vehicles. When you have any pros of particular thing, you'll also have at least pain. Definitely, there will be some problems. Now, we will discuss what is the cons of the electric vehicle. See, for to drive any electric vehicle, you need to charge the vehicle. So where do you get that power source? Then you need to go for a power generation station. Okay, for for, uh, for, us, for natural resources like hydro and uh, wind energy or solar, the these powers are natural, but these are less than 10% of total energy we consume in terms of electricity. So in, again, we have to depend on our thermal energy where you need to burn coal, you need to burn coal and we heat the water and we generate steam and we can the, uh, run turbines and so that the power will be generated. Whereas in conventional vehicles, you have uh, firing fuel in the car itself, but whereas you are in electric vehicles, you are burning your fuel at power stations. This will be a great concern. Okay, moving to the next point. As a electric car, we need to have a big battery bag to drive. So we need lithium as a material to source it. For that, we need to excavate from our earth to build so many batteries to drive these old cars. When it comes to the next point, the pollution due to used batteries. As you see, when your car self battery is used for four to five years, we have to throw it. The batteries which use for our uh, household inver inverters, that also you store you throw it from your house. If you world cars is used so many batteries, you can imagine how much pollution it would be. So when you are come using electric vehicles, also you have at least steam. So then why we need to go for this electric vehicles? Then definitely we have to compare when you are using a, a conventional motor vehicle and electric vehicle, we will balance it. Even though we are going for electric means, electric vehicle means there would be a a good amount of uh, advantages for our conventional vehicle. We will see why. Then why still EV? Imagine for a moment. See. One electric vehicle on the road can save an average of 1.5 million grams of CO2. Irrespective of having this power station pollution, battery pollution, in spite of so many hurdles, if you go for one electric vehicle, it would save 1.5 million grams of CO2. Definitely, this would solve our problem of pollution and also uh, overheating our planet. Now, after going through this my topic, I'll move on to next speech evaluations. To, uh, I'll invite general evaluator T.M. Dhananjay for next session to carry your evaluations part. What you, TM Dhananjay. Uh, thank you, Toshmash Suresh. Uh, good evening, everybody again. Let's begin with uh, evaluation of prepared speeches. First, let's me, let me call uh, TM Anoranjani to evaluate the speech of TM Ajiba. Can you see me? Am yes. I audible? Yes. Thank you. Hello friends, I'm back again. Time to evaluate Toastmaster Adiba's speech. 
and as we know the purpose of this project is for her to learn or review the basic research methods and present a well organized well researched speech on any topic and when she told me the title of her speech is how it can be solved i thought what an exciting title and it created curiosity in me as to what she would be touching upon it is a topic that every one of us could relate to we have so many issues to solve in our lives and around us so i was looking forward to what solutions adeva is going to give to my questions or issues and do you all agree with me her speech is not only curious but thought provoking too toastmaster adeva your opening lines how do you think only 5% of thoughts are new thoughts that's quite surprising it made me think is that true for me too and i started to analyze my thoughts how many of you felt the same yeah you researched on thoughts and effectively linked your research to practical things in life your issues as vice president admissions and you gave suggestions on how to effectively use those thoughts in difficult situations your hand gestures moving front and back left and right made it interesting and it made us alert you know it kept us alert in one word your body language conveyed the purpose very well and you well connected with the audience saying listen carefully in between the only achilles heel is the time you cross the time yesterday i when i reached out to toastmaster adiba and asked her what specific observations i should be making she wanted me to pay attention to the pace of her speech adiba your pace is fine voice modulation is excellent hand gestures body language is super just start working on the content make it crisp a little research is to see what everybody else has seen and what nobody has thought so to so the take away for the audience from your speech is to keep a watch on our thoughts and we may say how we can do that how we cannot do it but let me tell you there are techniques to observe our thoughts we can focus on our thoughts and control our thoughts and use it for our best use to recap adiba i loved your presentation skills the excitement in your tone and if you could just work on the content a little make it crisp and you nimble you are an exceptional storyteller and just keep going thank you go to your test tmod or the general evaluator yeah thank you uh, toshmaster manoranjini now i request toshmaster punit to evaluate pm raghu speech check check am i audible general evaluator yes you are audible thanks a lot today toastmaster raghu clearly communicated the need to change toastmaster raghu i'm sorry distinguished toastmaster raghu since you have communicated change here is my evaluation in the form of c h a n g e and let's see how you went about it's time to get to see which is the clarity of why you clearly communicated right at the start why we need to change and the how part was clearly elaborated throughout so i was clearly able to follow the flow of your thought so beautifully job done number 2 hand gestures and eye contact raghu i love the way when you said no doubt we have got 10 on 10 dcp points but we still have room to improve so your hand gestures were expressive you were very comfortable looking at the camera lens and this there has been a phenomenal improvement so i really appreciate that my favorite part in the entire speech being the a part audiences need here the audience being toastmasters for hyderabad entrepreneurs and i really love the way in which you empathize each and every member that no doubt when we do so many amazing activities of inclusiveness joint meeting panel discussion there is lot of fun no doubt wherein you focus on the positives but a drawback of that is that we we'll lose out on speakers a lot and you also gave a solution for that as well by collaborating and that is the strongest point which i loved in the entire speech now distinguished toastmaster raghu it's time how can we set the speech notches above here comes n g e n stands for neat and nimble conclusion distinguished toastmaster raghu this speech being an informative the general purpose of the speech was to inform and you did really well you articulated the why part and the how part i would have really loved 
if we have summarized the how part at the end as well. You summarize the why part, why it is important to change. But I would have equally loved if you had said how we are doing it. Just a brief summary of panel discussion, inclusiveness, membership criteria, or just a small brief summary of 10 seconds would have completed your conclusion. Next, G, generate enthusiasm, Raghu. What I found was that 10 on 10 DCP points, Raghu, you should be happy. And I felt that you were monotone throughout your speech. With practice, I'm sure you will, you can overcome this. And probably the dip in energy is because I'm sure you would be attending a lot of meetings. So it's natural to drain energy. Or since Kalpana not being at home, I'm sure you would be hungry and hence you would be devoid of energy. But having said that, let's get to the E, which is enhance the usage of pauses. You asked us a question. Why do we need to change? Allow us to reflect because the moment you reflect, you pause, you allow us to connect on an emotional level. And the moment we connect on an emotional level, the overall acceptability of your message becomes stronger. These are something which can be overcome through practice. So let me summarize clarity of why your biggest strength, hand gestures and, exp and expressive eye contact, audiences need, which I really love, just work on concluding your speech at a much more better level, generate enthusiasm and inculcate pauses so that your communication becomes a lot more impactful and so that you can communicate as the best leader Toastmaster for Hyderabad entrepreneurs I've ever seen. Back to you, General Evaluator. Thank you, Raghu. Thank you, Puneet, uh, for your detailed evaluation. Now uh, it's time to call my team and uh, get the reports of them. Now I invite our counter TM Anto to present his report. Thank you, Toastmaster Dhananjay. My role as our counter required, required me to definitely be nimble. And it's, it's an irony that I've taken up this role because ours and crutch words are my own Achilles heel. Nonetheless, I'm safe and here's my report. I made a couple of observations, so I'll start right from the top. So Sergeant at Arms had let's say one, one long pause when he was giving his introduction, when he started off the meeting. Then moving on, I'll just, I'll just go in the, in the flow that I've, I've basically written here. General Evaluator Dhanunjay had three hours. Get, uh, guess Akil had uh, three long pauses and four hours. Guest Meda had three hours. One, she used repeatedly, you know, so and and. Toastmaster Suresh, Toastmaster Day, got a very challenging role as TMOD, had one long pause, more than 10 hours, and he repeated the word okay multiple times. Speaker Adiba had definitely good pauses for effect, but at the same time, she had certain pauses between each sentence, which probably could have been shortened and improved the flow of speech. And she had one hour as well. Puneet had two hours. Table Topic Master Nagmadri had one hour and used the word so repeatedly. Guest Amit Kumar had eight hours and used the word so repeatedly. Guest Indira had two hours. Now, I want to also highlight the crutch word that has been used the most, which is so. How do we use so, so that it's used properly? I mean, otherwise this whole R counter report without feedback or corrective suggestions may not make sense. So is used when you describe a situation and then you also talk about a resulting action. Let me give you an example. The room was hot, so I opened the door. It's incorrect to use so at the beginning of a sentence. And especially if it's used repeatedly, it takes away the sheen from your speech. So always remember, have the situation in place. The situation needs to be explained. So this. So, so it was an interesting meeting. So I remained, I remained in the lobby for the networking session. The situation as well as the resulting action. To describe the resulting action, you can say, so the resulting action was taken. That's the correct way to use so. I hope most of the members are able to inculcate this and avoid the use of crutch words in the future. Over to you, 
general matter than NJ. Thank you, uh, Postmaster Anto, for your uh, detailed report. Now I request Ward Master Grammarian, Postmaster Vaishnavi, to present her report. Thank you so much, gentlemen. Uh, good as I am the word master grammarian, I am also fondly called as English teacher in my club. So a teacher is incomplete without a blackboard. Let me quickly share my screen and show you my blackboard. Please bear with me for yeah. Can someone confirm if the screen is visible? Yes. All right. So this is the word master report first. Word of the day is used by these. Uh, speaker one, Adiba, speaker two, Toastmaster, sorry, distinguished Toastmaster, Raghu twice, uh, table topic master, Toastmaster Madhuri, evaluator one, evaluator two, and our counter. I am not sure if Toastmaster one used the ADM of the day because I had a few network issues and I did not uh, listen to it properly. But ADM of the day was used by distinguished Toastmaster Raghu, Toastmaster Manoranjini, and Toastmaster Anto. So I appreciate all of you for using this. These are very simple and nice things you can use in your life as well. Moving ahead to the grammarian report. These are a few good usages I found in today's meeting. If I read all of these, I think I'll take so much of time. But yeah, let's quickly go. Conventional articulate was used twice. Blow my mind, devil, prototype, carpooling, perpetual, inevitable, inclusiveness, all work, no play, make makes Jack a dull boy. I heard this in my childhood and after this, I heard it today. Thank you, DTM Raghu. Integrity, empath empathize, vein of today's civilization, gas, guzzling car, voiced person, festival for my palate, mainstream, attention to distraction is death of discovery. I'm not sure if this is right because I had to quickly type after listening to it. Boon or bane, and a few more is thought-provoking, phenomenal dip in energy. These were a few nice things I saw in today's meeting and coming to the recommendations, temperature, someone said temperatures. So it, it's not temperatures, it's temperature. Above the two degrees, you don't have to use the before two degrees. As gracious, someone said you get 30 seconds as gracious. Gracious has a different meaning. It is 30 seconds as grace. Instead of saying less maintenance, it could be low maintenance. Speech objectives is objectives is not singular, so you, you're not supposed to use easy, you're supposed to say speech objectives are are for inclusiveness, is for inclusiveness. We don't even some some table topic speakers said we don't even realize key. Key is a Hindi pause. So instead of saying key, maybe you could have taken a short pause and say we don't even realize and go ahead. Where I am going every time, where I go every time. Currencies that are existing, currencies that exist. One of the important, one of the important. Uh, could I have, it, it would have sounded nice if, if they say, can I have or may I have. Those scientific mind, it's just scientific mind, not those scientific mind, is the cons. Cons is again plural, so are the cons, these are the cons. Save carbon dioxide. I did not understand this point. Why would someone save carbon? Maybe it is avoid carbon dioxide. Every one of us, it would have sounded nice if it is each one of us. So I think uh, this is the end of my report. Kudos to everyone who used word of the day and idiom of the day. And with this, I will like to hand over the stage back to the general evaluator. Thank you and over to you, Toastmaster Dhananjay. Thank you, uh, Toastmaster Vaishnavi, for your uh, very nice and uh, very. you have presented very well whatever the report you have made. And now I invite Timer Divya to present her report. I confirm that both the um, speech evaluators are qualified for voting. Uh, Timer Divya, please. Uh, thank you, General Evaluator. As I said, uh, uh, for the table topic round, because of some network issue, I couldn't confirm. Uh, all the time, all the speakers are, I mean, uh, qualified. Speaker one took one minute, 42 seconds, and speaker two, Amit, one minute, 31 seconds. Speaker three, Akhil, one minute, 51 seconds. Speaker four, Dhanujay Rao, one minute, 13 seconds. Speaker five, uh, Indra, Indri, Indika, some guest, 
she took one minute thirty three seconds. Speaker six, Manoranjan ma'am, one minute seven seconds, and speaker seven, Anthony, two minutes three seconds, and speaker eight, Puni took two minutes thirteen seconds. So everyone qualified in the table topic uh, table topic round, as I already mentioned to the Raghu. So and I couldn't catch up because of my so I had some network issues over here, so I couldn't do the evaluation time time part. Sorry for that. But however, this was my report. Uh, exactly the time the, the meeting started on time, and everything went very well. So everyone has take their own time and all. Thank you. Over to you, General Evaluator. I'm sorry to interrupt. We'll launch call for best speech evaluator. <clears throat> Just a few seconds. What? You have the results, and then next best auxiliary role player, Anto Vaishnavi and Divya. <clears throat> yeah, I have the winner. Thank you. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you, Gitim uh, Raghu. So, let me present my report as a general evaluator. So the meeting started on time and there is a good positive note by presiding officer DTM Raghu with good inspirational me message to start the meeting on positive note. And today I'm very much impressed with uh, the way the idiom of the day and uh, word of the day are presented by TM Vaishnavi. Actually, uh, the, my, our mind remembers visual information more uh, better than the audible information. So when she present uh, even with pictures like what is the background behind the uh, idiom of the day it is very impressive like we can remember the them for a long time and if we practice we can remember it for lifetime and the table topics by uh, nagamadra are also very good and overall it's a nice and wonderful meeting and i hope all guests and members have enjoyed the meeting and uh, they got very good value for the time they spent. I hope we'll continue more such meetings in future. And thank you and over to you, Toshmash of the day. Thank you, Dhananjay, for, uh, for your team and you for Andrew, uh, an wonderful evolution. Okay. Now we came to summary point of our electric vehicles. As entrepreneurs, we can grab new opportunities, new business opportunities like starting a charging stations and servicing centers and using batteries recycling and franchising business for electric vehicles. As we are entrepreneurs, we can go ahead with this new, uh, new, uh, new, what do you call that? Uh, new technology, new technology that is coming over. We can take a leap and we can invest on this sector. You can reap more fruits on your investment. I would suggest all entrepreneurs in this club look forward to these electric vehicles which is coming a big way in the future. So I would recommend all you to take note of it. And as entrepreneurs club, we have to take note of this. And to minimize the pollution as a citizens of this country and as a responsible citizen, use public transport and carpooling as Raghu suggested. And avoid using vehicles as much as possible as Adiba suggested, use online services where are needed and bring cycle culture in communities like a uh, few of the countries already started it. And lastly, bringing awareness among people. It is only helps to minimize the pollution. Thank you one and all for giving me, giving me, uh, giving me this opportunity and giving control back to presiding officer DGM Raghu. What to you Raghu. Thank you very much Suresh. <laughs> Thank you.
meeting number 31 went so great. Thank you very much, Suresh, for bringing us such a lively and lovely topic and also the need of the, our electric cars. Probably next car, I'll plan for one. I also love the part that how you try to bring the advantages, disadvantages, and the last part was lovely when you connected it back to entrepreneurs. Great job there, Postmaster Suresh. Launching the poll for best role players, please take a few seconds for this poll. While the poll is on, let me ask our visiting Toastmasters and guests for the feedback. Let me start with our guest, guest Amit Kumar. Oh, yeah, can, yeah, I have, yeah. Yeah, can I have your feedback on the meeting? And do you think this is something that will help you grow? Uh, yeah, definitely. Uh... Uh, Rahul sir. So I like uh, this is the first Toastmaster meeting that I have attended. So as I expected, it was really like uh, it was re it went really well. And I see here yeah, this is a great place where we could learn and improve ourselves all together. So yeah, definitely I'll be uh, I will be seeing myself in Toastmaster uh, in next meetings. Thank you very much, Amit. And then can I ask guest Harishita? Are you able to unmute yourself now? Hello. Somehow, there seems to be bad luck. We were not able to unmute while this, the tabletop is around. Yeah. Can I have your feedback? How did you see, see the meeting? And do you think this is something that will help you to grow? Yes. Uh, the meeting was really nice. And the to table topics were really interesting. And the speaker spoke really well. Uh, so there's a lot of uh, uh, positivity in the meeting today. Yeah, and uh, and the break session was also very good. Uh, it was really interesting for me. I I wanted to speak, but then I don't know somehow uh, I couldn't unmute myself till now. Yeah, and I would like to join these meetings. For, in the future also. No problem, Ashita. Yeah, we'll get back to you. Nagmadri, please note, and then we'll, we'll communicate with you. Thank you very much. Next, I have guest Indira Reddy. Indira, first thing is I would say congratulate you for taking the first step and trying the table topics. I know it's always hard, even for experienced Toastmaster, they always have that sweat coming out to be nimble enough to try table topics, but you did try. So do you want to give feedback on how the meeting went today? Yeah, first of all, thank you for encouraging me here. Uh, actually, I'm, I already attended two meetings, so I'm interested. Uh, that's what I'm saying here. Thank you for encouraging me and thank you for everyone. Thank you very much, Indira. Can I have guest Meda? Yes, sir. Yeah, uh, I really enjoyed the meeting, uh, everything, especially the uh, presentation about electric vehicles and other topics. I Everything was so wonderful and very organized and everything. So I really had a good time. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, Meda. Looking forward to see you as a yes, member yes. of the club. So yes, sir. Now we have a visiting Toastmaster also. Let me start with Toastmaster Rajesh. I met him in one of the club where he, he was a, he was an evaluator. I was a speaker, but though he was not my evaluator, I loved his evaluation. I invited him to attend our meeting and we have him as our guest today. Raji, do you want to give us feedback, Raji? How did you find our meeting? Uh, Raghu, are you talking to me or Rajesh? I'm sorry, yeah, I was meant Raji, but I said Rajesh. Yeah, Raji. Close enough. He was an actor too. <laughs> you want honest feedback or you want me to sugarcoat it? Whatever you do you like. You are, you, you are the boss of the meeting. You tell me. I think the meeting was run very well. But for the table topics, I think we need to explain to our guests what the structure of a table topic is. And we need them to know, 
even the most experienced impromptu speakers often bomb at table topics. Somebody asked me the other day about basketball. I don't know anything about basketball. So I had to spend one minute dancing in and out of things that I had no idea about. It can happen to anyone. But as a general rule, if I am the table topics master, I will tell my guests or people who've never done it before, like Arishita, I would tell her, first of all, I don't care how well you do. Nobody is judging you. We are stuck. We have to clap for you anyway. Okay. So please, even if you sing a darn song, we don't care. Do the one minute. It's good for you. Every little bit counts. Competence as a speaker is an accretionary process drop by drop. Second thing I would tell them is try to have an opening, a closing, and a middle. An opening is an introduction to your topic, and a closing is a takeaway. What do you want to take away from this? What do you want people to remember? And above all, every table topic is about connecting. How do you connect with the audience? I did not do as well as I would have liked to do today, but that doesn't matter. That's expected. Not every day is a good day. So Arishita, the fact that you hung in there, that goes a long way. Thank you. Thank you, Rajiv. Thank you so much. It Rajiv. was Indira actually, but then fine. Yeah, they could have given the, the guidelines, but yeah, other guidelines is more like an education session that cannot happen in every meeting. But then we can, we will have it as a session. So thank you, Rajiv. And then we have Adipa. So how did you feel about the meeting? Uh, wow, I really loved your meeting. And um, um, I contacted Raghu once you just uh, put it on the group that you requested a, a speaker. And I didn't think about it. I was I haven't asked to teach prepared, but I wanted to, to come to try to visit new people and to discover new culture and new ways of how Toastmasters meetings are conducted. So I really, really, really enjoyed being with you guys. It was amazing. It was different. It was new. I love the atmosphere and how you used to manage your meeting. Um, kind of new things with um, the idea of the day. In my club, we use only the word of the day. This is a good point for you. Um, the way how the Toastmaster of the day animates the meeting according to the theme in different parts you come up and speak again about the same topic i love this one um maybe just working on the vocal variety when we are showing presentations the voice is the most um, interactive thing that you can share with people and um the table topic session was also amazing so only good takeaways from you. Uh, thank you so much for my evaluator. I will keep working on myself to to become better next time. And for sure, I will visit you again and again. I will share with you my um, club Facebook page so you can know when we are organizing our meetings. Please, please, please come to visit us. It's always on Thursdays on 7.30 p.m in Morocco time, it's GMT plus one. I would love to see you, any one of you, all of you, if you want. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Adiba. So one thing that I learned in Toastmasters, so if you know, in Indian Parliament, on the building of the Indian Parliament, there is one shloka, which means, Vasudeva Kutambika, entire world is one family. I, did, I just read it before, but if I felt it, in fact, in the true manner, that is in Toastmasters. I visited clubs from different countries, Pakistan, Morocco, or different, Egypt as well, and there were other countries, but everywhere they felt like home. It's not like that your hostile situation was not there. I think that is one good thing that we get to network a lot in Toastmasters. And thank you for visiting us. If not anyone else, I will be there in your Thursday meeting for sure. Thank you. You're welcome. So with that, 
It's time to announce the results. Rajesh Khan, I mean, sorry, I can't have that name, but it's Rajiv Khanna who has won as a best table talk speaker today. Congratulations, Rajiv. I'll correct it and send you. The um, speaker is coming to me. Best speech evaluator goes to Toastmaster Puneet. Congratulations, Puneet, the champion. And Toastmaster Vaishnavi is the best oxide role player. Congratulations, Vaishnavi. Thanks for taking the role and also performing it in the peaks. And best role player of the day is the Toastmaster of the day, today, Toastmaster Suresh Potipali. Congratulations, Suresh. Congratulations. What I would say is the best part is we don't have any tie today. And then we do have every role player defined there. Last one minute. Before we start social networking, let me call the meeting adjourned. Thank you all for joining this evening on Sunday and making this meeting a memory to cherish. Thank you, everyone. Meeting is adjourned. You can stay back by another 15 minutes to network and just talk. I'm stopping.